In the mid-1700s, a young woman called Honora Nagel, nano to her family, arrived in Cork. She was educated in Europe. As an adult, she'd intended to return to France and enter a convent. Instead, her spiritual director convinced her that her vocation lay in educating the poor of Cork. It was a vocation she would follow with compassion, faith and determination. Nano's brother Joseph welcomed her to Cork, where she secretly started her schools. After finding out about her work, he was furious at the risk she was taking. But eventually she won the family support, and she needed it as the number of pupils grew. I took in the children by degrees, not making a noise about it. In about nine months, I had 200 children. When the Catholics saw what services I did, they begged that I would set up schools at the other end of town. The first school opened sometime after 1750. By 1757, there were seven schools, five of them, amazingly for the time, for girls. They offered a mix of religious education, basic literacy and numeracy, and for those who needed to earn a living as they studied, workrooms for trades like sewing. These schools were her joy, as she put it. I often think my schools will never bring me to heaven, as I only take delight and pleasure in them. After school, she made her way into the city's grimmest areas, visiting the sick, aged and starving. In the darkness of Cork's famously underlit alleys, the lady with the lantern became a symbol of hope. Nanu knew she wouldn't live forever. She focused on finding a solid group who would continue her work. In 1767, Nano went to visit her cousin Margaret in France. Margaret had joined the Ursuline Order a year earlier, and Nano stayed at her convent. Her supporter and advisor, Father Francis Moylan, felt that the Ursulines could help with her work. In 1771, Nano poured much of her inheritance from her uncle Joseph into founding a convent for the Ursulines in Cove Lane. That step took as much courage as it did money. The restrictions that remained were still harsh, and Nano's activities were viewed with suspicion by Protestants and Catholics alike. Writing after her death, Dr. Coppinger, Bishop of Cloyne and Ross, lamented that she had been bitterly cursed in our streets as a mere impostor, deceiving the world with her throng of beggars' brats. Against the odds, Nano succeeded, but the Ursulines were forbidden to work outside the convent walls as Nano wanted. So, four years later, in 1775, she founded the Sisters of the Presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Its aim from the beginning was to work among the people. There were just four of them to begin with, Nano herself, Mary Ann Collins, Elizabeth Burke and Mary Fuhi. Worried about public reaction, the new sisters were discreet as they set up their convent. I waited till the time seemed quite peaceful, yet notwithstanding we stole like thieves. I got up before three in the morning and had all our beds taken down and sent to the house before anyone was up in the street. Keeping a Catholic school would be illegal until 1782, but the authorities seem to have turned a blind eye to Nano. Not content with running the schools and visiting the sick, in 1783, Nano began building an almshouse for elderly women. Her determination to help others seemed unstoppable. I am building the house I spoke to you about for the old women, which I was obliged to apply to the charity of the public, as I was not able to build it at my own expense. But she couldn't go on forever. Exhausted by a life of service and constantly exposed to the sick and dying, her own health failed. On the 26th of April, 1784, at the age of 65, Nano died. Her last words to her sisters were, Love one another as you have hitherto done. Spend yourselves for the poor. Nano's vision had prepared the way for the Order's work in the wider world. Indeed, she'd foreseen and welcomed it. In Dublin, using of all things a lottery win, 
Teresa Mullally had set up her own school for poor girls in 1766. She then went looking for an order of sisters to help run it, and met the Presentation Sisters. By the time Nano Nagel died, she had already started to build links with Dublin and in 1794 a convent was established in George's Hill, Dublin. By 1800 there were six convents in Ireland. By 1866 there were foundations in England, Newfoundland, Australia, India and the USA. Today, Nano's vision of a Catholic education continues to be brought to life by Presentation Sisters across the world. For I can assure you my schools are beginning to be of service to a great many parts of the world. From an illegal school with earthen floors, fronted by a bread shop, to a global force for good. This is the legacy of Nano Nagel, a testament to the power of one woman's compassion, faith and determination.